Okay, so you'd like a small, sensible super mini. You're going to choose this, the Volkswagen Polo, right? Maybe, but what about its Czech cousin? It's cheaper, more spacious, and more comfortable. But what if you want a bit of sporty Latin flair? Well, say it reckons the Ibiza is the one to go for. For loads of us, a Volkswagen Polo is going to be the go-to choice for a small hatchback. It outsold the Volkswagen Golf in 2021 and was treated to a comprehensive update. Then there's this, the sporty Ibiza from Spanish firm Sayet, which was also updated in 2021. And then there's this, the spacious and sensibly priced Skoda Fabia. All cars come from the Volkswagen Group and share a lot of the same parts, but are all subtly different question is, which one is best? Over the next few minutes, we're going to look at what makes a Polo a Polo, what makes an Ibiza into an Ibiza, and what makes a Fabia a Fabia, and whether what are mechanically very similar cars can actually end up feeling sufficiently different from one another. Can the Golf in miniature vibes of the Polo help justify its price tag? Will the Seat prove as sporty as it promises? And will the Skoda offer all the practicality and value we've come to expect from the Czech brand? Let's find out. But before we do that, please subscribe to the Car Gurus UK YouTube channel by clicking here so that you catch all of our latest videos. In terms of boot space, the Fabia wins it hands down. It's got 380 litres of space, which is the same as a Volkswagen Golf. It does, however, have a high load lip and no adjustable boot floor. If you go for the Seat Ibiza, it's got 355 litres. It does still have a high load lip. And if you go for a higher spec model, you get an adjustable boot floor. And then the Volkswagen Polo is the smallest at 333 litres, but it does have an adjustable boot floor as standard. So there's not much to differentiate the boots of these cars, but when it comes to the interior, they are expressing their personalities very differently. The Volkswagen focuses on classy materials and a sleek design, while the Fabia majors on space and the Say It here does its best at being a little bit sporty. The Volkswagen's classy big car vibe isn't smoke and mirrors, it's fantastically well equipped for a super mini. Even entry level life trim gets Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, a digital instrument display, LED headlights and adaptive cruise control that will help steer you and keep you in your lane, a real big car feature. Move higher up the spec ladder to this style model and you also get built-in sat-nav as standard, rear and front parking sensors, wireless phone connectivity and clever matrix LED headlights that constantly adjust so that you'll never dazzle oncoming traffic. Airness is the key word with the Skoda Fabia. Up front, the low wide dashboard helps emphasize the sense of space, as do tricks such as the two-spoke steering wheel and horizontal trim line that runs through the circular air vents on either side of the car. Yet, despite the sense of space, it's notably less plush than the VW. This is the one down from top spec color edition, and yet you only get basic air conditioning, no built-in sat-nav, no cruise control, and no parking sensors. But you do get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, keyless entry and start, and a digital driver display. Visually, the Ibiza's interior is lifted by the coloured air vent surrounds, a leather wrapped steering wheel and in FR models by the silver interior detailing, but it's neither as airy as the Fabia nor as plush as the Polo. It is pretty well equipped though. You have to step up to this top spec FR Sport to get a digital instrument cluster and there's no adaptive cruise control, but otherwise the standard cruise control and smartphone mirroring across the range built in sat nav on all but the base SE model and dual zone climate control on FR and excellence models means there are more than enough luxury goodies to keep you amused on a long journey. All three cars offer reasonable rear seat space, although none of them offers a centre rear armrest and we wouldn't suggest going three abreast in any of them. Although the Fabia edges the other two for shoulder and leg room, up front all three offer good space and a reasonable range of seat adjustment. Although the Polo's comfort sports seats are the best for a long journey, the Seat's part suede seats look great but are only available on FR sport and excellence trim, while the Skodas feel a little flat and unsupportive. So what does the Polo, the most expensive car here, drive like? Well, confession time. It has the least powerful engine out of the three of them. You can get the 108 brake horsepower one litre TSI engine that the other two have, but that only comes with a seven speed automatic transmission and R-line sport trim. The engine fitted to this one 
is a 95 brake horsepower engine with a five-speed manual gearbox and it accounts for about three quarters of the Volkswagen Polo sales. It's half a second slower to 62 miles per hour than the Ibiza and almost a second slower than the DSG equipped Skoda Fabia, but it will give you 54.3 miles per gallon to the Ibiza's 52.3 miles per gallon and the Fabia's 50.3 miles per gallon, so it's at least more economical. The problem is that it only has five forward gears as opposed to six in the Ibiza and seven in the Fabia. That can make performance feel a bit flat, particularly at low revs and accentuates the fact that this is an engine that doesn't really like to rev. It sounds more strained than in either the Skoda or the Seat too. Aside from the engine, the Polo's behaviour on the road is very grown up. It feels very stable at motorway speeds and the ride is firm but controlled. Although on these 17 inch alloy wheels it does thump a little over transverse bumps in the road. Just don't expect to have that much fun. The steering is light and easy in town, but that combined with a sluggish engine means this is not a car for twisty road fun. That particular activity is much better served by the Ibiza, especially this FR Sport model, which gets a six-speed manual gearbox and sport suspension. Put simply, the Seat Ibiza in FR trim is one of the most sophisticated cars in its class. The steering gives you lovely feedback, body lean is well controlled through the corners and despite having a slightly firmer ride, it never thumps over potholes or ridges in the road. If we're being picky, the steering is a little bit light as are the clutch and accelerator pedals, but you'll be thankful for that in town. The 108 brake horsepower version of the three-cylinder, one-litre TSI engine feels much more perky here too. You even get a little flutter from the turbo when you lift off, which is a cheeky little hot hatch addition. Hot hatch isn't a phrase you'd apply to the Skoda. No, its shoes are far too sensible for any of that nonsense. Instead, what you get is an engine that feels the smoothest of all three cars, despite having an engine that is all but identical to the other two cars here. Maybe then it's down to the smooth seven-speed DSG automatic gearbox. Talking of which, that gearbox is as much a curse as it is a blessing. It just feels slow-witted and is almost too keen to change up. We've seen it get to fifth gear while traveling at just 25 miles per hour. That's quite possibly a quest for better fuel economy on the part of Skoda's engineers. The consequence is that it feels like it needs to skip two or three gear ratios before it's really ready to accelerate. And we don't recall that being the case with any other Volkswagen or Seat fitted with the same gearbox. But driving fun isn't at the heart of the Fabia's mission. It's got light steering and a comfortable ride to complement that smooth engine. So what if it feels uninvolving through the corners? It'll get you from A to B with minimal fuss, and if that's what matters to you, then the Skoda School's big brownie points. So what do we recommend? Well, if you want a car that's fun to drive, go for the Seat Ibiza. And if practicality and space and value for money are top of your priority list, it's hard to argue against the Fabia. Overall though, we reckon the Volkswagen Polo is best. It's the best quality. It's got a really big car feel about it. And all that extra equipment kind of offsets the cost quite comfortably. And if you go for the smaller engine, the cost difference is not that much. But what's really interesting about this test is how three cars using the same mechanical components from effectively the same company can end up feeling so different. That's quite a trick, and Volkswagen, Seat and Skoda should be applauded for pulling it off. But which one's your favourite? Let us know in the comments below, and please remember to like and subscribe to the Car Gurus UK YouTube channel. Oh, and while you're searching for your next new car, remember to visit cargurus.co.uk where you'll find great deals from top-rated dealers.